Hey, hi there. So today I'm going to explain how I work on Marvelous Designer for creating clothes for Yuma Avatar. So uh, first I'm going to open the project I have for the male avatar. Okay, as you can see this is a very high poly mesh. Uh, it might be quite heavy for this computer while recording, but uh, this is a uh, important if you're planning on generating high density meshes uh, having a detailed base mesh like this one just avoid uh, using a base mesh with a volume uh, far different from the base uh, Yuma avatar other side you're going to have to uh, work on the final cloth volume to adapt to the final shape so, uh, first, let me explain that, uh, well, Marvelous Designer basically work on, uh, with patterns, cloth patterns that you can draw using those uh, tools here. Uh, I will start drawing some uh, t-shirts for this avatar. So I'm basically drawing those po points and now I'm going to use the symmetry uh, with unfolds. Uh, after that, let me just drag this to here, okay, so I can see. After you draw those, you actually press this uh, icon here, so you can update the cloth piece or as a 3D mesh. And I'm going to use the arrangement points for positioning this cloth here. Uh, I'm also going to duplicate this here and position here on the back. Great. Now we have the two sides. If I play the simulation right away, uh, you're going to see this two pieces fall apart because there is nothing uh, defining my junction between them. So right now I'm going to do some edges here uh, for this cloth and now, now uh, actually jump, uh, create a junction for those pieces. I use the segment ceiling for this so I click here and here, for example, and we have those parallel lines showing how those, those two pieces will interact. The same applies here. Okay. And here and here. Now if I play the simulation, we're actually going to see the cloth catching together. As you can see, it's, it's huge. <laughs> I need to adjust the size. Let me pause this simulation. Uh, first, let me change the color of this cloth so it's easier to see on the, the avatar. I'm also going to change the resolution here for this on particle distance for uh, some higher value. This reduces the resolution of the mesh. Uh, but, well, uh, as I'm recording this pr process, and this is not a very fast machine, uh, we have to s slow down. Let me in here. Okay. So, first of all, I need to reduce the size of this shirt. And so, to handle this, I simply uh, press, let, I drag those uh, points here closer to the neck in both sides. Let me update. Okay. Uh, you can see I, I actually can drag the cloth so I can do some small adjusts. I'm also going to expand this curvature a bit, a bit more. Yeah, okay. Nice. 
So now we have a huge amount of uh, cloth here that we want to get dry. So basically I'm going to uh, scale this area a little bit. Both on front, uh, frontal uh, and back cloth areas. Okay, yeah, it's a bit closer to the body and uh, it's not a completely uh, solving this. So I'm going to do some two, two other uh, techniques for handling this. First, you might might have noticed that we have a lot of extra cloth in this area. There are two uh, main ways of handling this. Uh, first, we could uh, cut this extra cloth like this and uh, put those two areas together. You see, uh, but. What we usually do in this uh, in this kind of area is to actually reduce with a curvature. Also, we have uh, too much cloth uh, here too. Okay, something like that is better. And let me run the simulation again. You see how I can drag the cloth so it's better uh, fitting the rest of the body. In this situation, I'm going to move the entire mesh a little bit so it's going to update the simulation. Okay, yeah. Better. And now it's a matter of uh, adjusting the curvature again. So that be something like that doesn't work well. Yeah. Yeah. You can see now how, how it's getting better. I usually uh, select those areas here and I change the fold value. Let me try to show you how this works. Then You actually now can see the, the volume of this uh, junction here. Let me turn off the serene lines and you can still see the, the, the shape here, the junction. And then the same on the this area here. I simply select those and uh, change the phone angle. We can actually use a higher value if we want something more uh, stronger definition for this. Also I usually use uh, 240 for the for this angle for this kind of uh, situation. You can see the, the foam. Yeah. Now the final for the final mesh. Uh, usually, what I do, I uh, basically we have this mesh. Let me show the complexity here. We can actually uh, use a lower complexity. And export this one. Uh, let me mail t shirts 
one. Uh, basically, what, what I use here is uh, single objects, and then most of the other edges I'm going to uh, work on the 3D application like Blender or 3D Max for handling. Uh, but this is basically the base shape for a low low poly mesh that I'm exporting here. And I also uh, do a simulation with a higher density mesh, like this, to generate the normal maps. You need to uh, run the simulation for some time, so that it can have a, a smooth results, like this. and. Uh, you see here the level of detail that's possible. Also, it's important to have this in mind, depending on the base mesh underneath of the cloth, you might have this kind of uh, detail of the body shape itself. You might want or you might not want this, so you need to be aware of this. And then you can actually uh, export this Uh, in this case, it's going to be the high poly version. Oh, also, sorry, uh, it's a good idea to not export the avatar shape itself, as it's just going to uh, generate more data. Actually, you just need the cloth, uh, not the avatar. Sorry, I forgot to mention that before. We are here in Blender, um, so this is the low poly version. Uh, I could actually have uh, even lower resolution for this. Uh, as you can see, I'm now uh, defining the seams for this cloth, so I can actually uh, define a final UV. Uh, also, it's really important for uh, for this example. I'm just using the this as the final mesh, uh, as a triangulated mesh, as you can see. But you can also uh, consider the using the quad, uh, a quad for the final mesh uh, topology. It's usually uh, better for animation. Uh, in fact, uh, this triangulated mesh is very powerful for dynamic simulation, uh, but for uh, lighting calculation and other uh, things, it's better to to use uh, sorry uh, uh, quads instead of this those triangles this way this kind of pattern. And here we have the high poly version. I'm going to simply uh, select the high poly, the low poly, uh, create a new texture, okay, and I will just bake this those normal maps here. Okay, so here you can see the results. You can actually use the slow poly to sharpen this normal map. Uh, now I'm just doing some edges on the cloth shape, final shape, and also uh, the rig and skin of the, the cloth using the, the same technique I've explained it on previous video. And uh, as you can see, the cloth is already rigged and working with the avatar. So with Marvelous Designer, it's really easy and fast to create content for Yuma. Uh, that's it. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to contact me. See ya. Goodbye.